Hi, my name is Mark Bridge with True Imagineers. Um, I'd like to spend a moment today together to talk about assessing rope bridges on Tree Motions and Tree Motion Evo. If we go back to the basics, the rope bridge on a harness is nothing else than a rope. And we're able to assess rope, we really apply the same criteria. So we're checking for um, constant diameter, we're checking for damage to the cover, and it's a, so it's a visual inspection for damage to the cover, and a tactile inspection for damage to the core. So I think that's something we do on a daily basis with our climbing lines. So really, we should be applying the same criteria to the rope bridges on the harnesses. I think obviously the other thing that you're doing as well is you might also be rolling a bite to check for stiffness, for instance. So that's another thing I might be doing here, just checking to see whether there's a consistent, um, whether there's the outsides are maybe stiffer than the inside or the other way around, which might indicate severe loading. Um, but I think before we go into that, um, there's a number of things I'd like to talk about. I'd like to talk about the construction of this line, uh, and I'd also like to talk about um, objective fail criteria versus more touchy-feely and slightly more diffuse fail criteria, because this is not a cut and dry issue. There are soft factors here um, that are quite hard to quantify. One of the reasons we're having these discussions, why we're having these questions asked of us, um, or the manufacturer is, uh, that um, because it's not entirely straightforward. In many ways, uh, this is a question I would defer to the manufacturer and just say, look, this is for Teufelberger in this instance to answer. So why do we go and check the user manual, which is obviously the go-to go place uh, to check um, when you're looking for answers. Um, on page 12, they state that if the sheath of the rope bridge is ruptured by any means, uh, for example, cutting, heating, or abrasion, uh, or a tactile inspection of the core identifies changes in diameter, or rope properties, the rope bridge shall be replaced immediately by or under the supervision of a competent person. Um, so that's clear enough. So there's, uh, there's obvious fail criteria, such as um, a, cu a cut to the, um, to the cover, uh, severe abrasion damage. So in regards to contact with handsaws, I'd like to s clarify that um, any contact with a handsaw blade uh, ought to be a fail criteria because conceivably what might happen is that the teeth of the handsaw puncture through the cover without leaving any visible damage and have actually damaged the core. So um, that should be, uh, an, in my opinion or in our opinion, that should be a, an automatic fail criteria is any contact with handsaws. Then there's also lifespan. Uh, the, uh, the user instructions, the manual here says, just makes a ge generic statement about service life uh, on page 17, which says that it's theoretically possible period of use is up to five years from the time when the product is first removed from the undamaged package um, with the three years in storage. So really, a harness that's hardly been used um, with a bridge that's hardly been used, that bridge is good for the lifespan of that product. But as soon as the harness gets sees more use, um, is exposed to abrasion, mechanical damage, whatever, we have to periodically check for uh, damage and wear and tear to the bridge. The bridge itself, the construction of the bridge, is a polyester cover that is braided over a intermediate cover and a Dyneema core. The load-bearing part is the Dyneema core, and the, you can think of the polyester cover as a wear sleeve, really, just to protect the inside from, from wear and tear and general damage. Dyneema is really good for strength. It's also good on abrasion. Uh, it's not good for heat. But as we're not expecting any heat to be generated on the rope bridge, this seems an obvious choice um, when considering materials to be used in the rope bridge. So. We identified a couple of objective fail criteria. So any forms of cuts, um, abrasion that um, is such that the cover is so threadbare you can see down to the core. Um, contamination, uh, I would strongly suggest uh, any contact with contaminants. For instance, discoloration might be an indicator of contact with contaminant. It's gonna be really hard to say whether, was it battery acid, was it chain oil, was it, um, fuel for the chainsaws, what exactly has this rope been in contact with. 
I would suggest that if there's any suspicion of uh, the rope bridge having been in contact with any form of contaminant, I would suggest that that's a fail criteria as well. The other thing that um, you can do is you can contrast and compare. On this harness, actually, you can see that there is a the aluminium deposit from the ring, ring running on the bridge that you get, this grey deposit, um, and the other side is um, as, as new. Of course, it's not new because it has seen service life and flexing, um, but it does allow you to uh, compare the two sides and try and get a feel for um, has there been abrasion. This is a normal wear pattern and is no cause for alarm. It's across the whole bridge. That's just what happens when you get hardware running on textiles. So I think when we're trying to make a choice about um, whether a rope bridge is still safe to be in service, I think what we're trying to do is we're building towards a confidence moment. We're taking hard objective criteria, we're applying them, and then we go into the more diffuse, touchy-feely parts of our assessment. So one of the things that you'll notice um, on the inside of the bend radius around the forward hardware is inevitably there's a, a deflection um, of, of forces there, a change in direction. This will cause a pinch that will um, yeah, you can feel that, that that rope has been compressed there inevitably. Compression is fine, Dyneema doesn't mind being compressed, but I do need to go and check whether there is abrasion there, where I, whether I can see the core. That might be due to uh, a sharp point on the front hardware or, or some other reason, but that's something I'm going to check. If it's merely being compressed, um, I don't I have an issue with that. I think that would be, that's, uh, that's a pass, because it's just part of this design is that the rope is the forces are deflected there and the same is true on the s lights the standard tree motion but also on the evo the angle here is a bit different the rope has been presented or the hardware is being a bit presented a bit differently to the rope but the same still holds true there um, i think the first thing we need to ask ourselves when we're trying to build towards a um, an authoritative statement that this is safe to use is we need to identify what rope we're actually dealing with same as with the climbing line um, you know, I can't I obviously I can't use any old climbing line to go out and climb on trees. The same is applicable to, to the rope harness. Um, so I think the first thing I need to be able to do is identify the rope bridge that's in there. Is it the correct rope the correct material? Is it the correct rope bridge to be using? Is it the correct replacement part that I'm using that's been um, allowed by the manufacturer? Then I can assess whether I can consider whether the stopper knots are correct. Now, it may be worth mentioning here that the stopper knots um, that come from the factory have a red thread, a marker thread. And what the marker thread is doing is it's really an indicator that the knot left the, family, left the factory correctly tied. It's a, a means for the manufacturer to prove um, that um, I can, as an end user, tie the stopper knot myself, retie it, adjust the length of the bridge um, and retie it myself. Um, but then they, they just have a, a proof that if the marker thread is not in there and the knot was, should have been mistied, uh, they can say that that didn't go out the factory tied that way. The other thing is the red stitch you'll see in the end of the line. Uh, this has multiple functions. One is to ensure that there's enough uh, rope standing proud of the knot. And the other thing is that in case of severe loading, it stops the core from sliding through the knot. It keeps it um, to, it keeps the cover and the core acting uh, as, as one rope, as it were. Um, so that's, there's multiple function there. Um, the way that the cover wears will really depend on the environment you're working in, whether you work in an environment with sandy soils, for instance, a lot of dirt, sap, whatever. It'll depend on the weight of the climber. It'll depend on the type of climbing that they're doing and the type of hardware that they're running on the bridge, um, whether it's a ring, or a axis swivel, I've got the transformer running on here. Um, there's just uh, various options um, of hardware that will also have an influence on how the bridge wears. Really, everything I've mentioned now for this s light is also applicable to the standard tree motion, is also applicable to the tree motion Evo. The Evo, obviously, uh, the situation here, the exit of the line from the forward hardware is a little bit different. The bend radius changed a little bit, but I'm doing exactly the same thing. Tactile inspection, visual inspection, get a feel for the rope. What is the, is the stiffness? Is, it, is there stiffness? Is there thickening? Or is there, um, is, you know, what, what's the diameter do um, along the whole length of the line? Um, that is always going to remain the same. 
So I think if I had one piece of advice to give is that if there's a shadow of doubt in your mind whether the rope bridge is safe or not, um, I would urge you to replace it. Uh, it was one of the ideas of using knotted uh, rope, uh, rope bridges, but also the stitched bridges on the, on the Evo, is that they are easy and ch relatively cheap to replace. Um, so I would suggest to simply have, um, like we have here in our yard, uh, replacement rope bridges so that it's just an easy decision to just go over and in the morning just whip in a new rope bridge. If you have any other questions regarding this, uh, we'll post a number of links uh, below this video uh, that will uh, point you on towards manufacturer information where Teufelberg have further specified um, or have, have offered information on uh, maintenance and replacement of rope bridges. Uh, or obviously if you have specific questions, uh, Teufelberg, the manufacturer is the correct partner to get in touch with. I would also suggest that um, during your daily work that you do partner checks you know you check each other's rope bridges that you regularly check your own rope bridge because it's just such an easy thing to do visual inspection tactile inspection probably good to go if there's things that are unclear clarify them if it needs replacing replace it don't wait too long because yeah your life is literally on that line so climb safe and thank you for your attention